Hi, my name is Sean McMain. Welcome to this week's Ask a Developer. Our first question comes from Ryan, who asks, how can I store encrypted data in my app? There's good news here. Apple has provided us a framework called Data Protection that works with the standard file APIs in iOS to provide levels of cryptographic protection for the information we store to the file system in iOS. Apple introduced this in iOS 4, but we had to take advantage of it manually at that point. In iOS 7, Apple has actually turned this on by default, so there's no extra work that's required by the developer. We just use the NS File Manager APIs and we get this behavior for free. Further good news is that this cryptography is done in hardware, so there's almost no performance penalty for encrypting your data as it moves to disk. The bad news is all of the cryptography is keyed on the user's PIN, so if the user hasn't set up a PIN, we don't get the advantage of any of this behavior. So encourage your users to use a PIN if they're needing secure data. If you're using core data to store your information, you may want to include another level of protection on top of that. You can encrypt data before it goes into the database using your choice of algorithms. You can also use a library called Encrypted Core Data that's an open source project that will allow all of your information to be encrypted before it goes into the file storage using SQL Cipher. Once this library is set up, which is admittedly a little bit of work, it works transparently, so there's no additional effort for you there. So depending on your particular requirements, you have several options for storing encrypted data in your app. Our next question comes from Jess, who asks, what should I be doing to be ready to develop for wearables? This is something of a bad news, good news situation. The bad news is that all of the different wearables that are on the market now use different development platforms. The Galaxy Gear is built on top of the Android SDK. The Pebble uses its own combination of C and JavaScript for development. Apple has a rumored iWatch, which isn't out yet, but will doubtless use some variant of iOS when it's finally released. And finally, the Google Glass platform has its own SDK, which is built on top of Android, but you have to know additional things to develop for that platform. The good news, however, is that lots of the concepts transfer from one platform to another. Many of these devices include small screens, so as you consider how to develop for wearables, think about making your information as concise and atomic as possible to present on these various screens. One tool that can be helpful for you as you're doing this sort of design is our Glass Sim tool, which you'll find at glasssim.com. It will allow you to design screens for glass and overlay them on a simulated field of view. In addition, many of these devices include sensors of various kinds. For example, accelerometers are very common to most of these. If you're interested in learning how to deal with accelerometer data, read up on signal processing. You'll be able to apply that information across all of these different wearable platforms. The good news there is that most of the vendors actually provide higher level APIs, so you can also just ask, when am I walking, rather than having to deal with all those signals. So in conclusion, if you're interested in getting into wearables development, just get a hold of one of the devices out there, start working on it, and become familiar with this space. Then keep your eyes peeled for what new things come out in the wearables market over the next year. That's all for this week's Ask a Developer. Tweet your questions to hashtag AskADev or leave them in the comments section.